and welcome to episode 74 of Full Managers then 15 with Southampton. And it's really been a case that's been a long time no see because I haven't recorded an episode of this for a while. I've just possibly bordering on two to three weeks. I was away on holiday for a little bit, plus I've just been pretty busy. And I haven't really gotten around to it, but finally I've found some uh, free time. And hopefully I can go come back to uh, uploading a little bit more regularly, as I do know that the uh, uploads have been a little bit stretched out. Um, which is unfortunate, because I went through a good phase where I was uploading nearly one a day. And I'd like to get back to something near enough to that. Anyway, because of that, I, I kind of ju- I haven't really uh, been near it, so I'll need to kind of refresh my memory as as much as you guys probably do. The last episode, I think, was the one all draw. Yeah, at home to Hull, at home to Hull, where uh, Max Dunn equalised in the last minute. And at that stage, I was complaining because we were drawing far too many games. I think we'd drawn four on the bounce. Yeah, we had in well in the league, we'd won a few Europa League games. In amongst that, uh, but we'd been drawing too many games, and um, there's been a few more draws in there. But it's been a little bit more inconsistent. But at least we we've picked up some prize victories in that as well. But after the uh, two or one one draw at home to Hull, we travelled to Cardiff where we suffered another disappointing draw, two two. Uh, this one again, you know, you're going into the game thinking we should win it. But actually, when you look at it at the end of the game, probably getting out of there with a point was a good was a good job. You know, Rabeo did give us the lead in the eighth minute, but Mick Ryan, a guy we had back at Everton, and uh, Nikola Svetonov gave them the lead in the 76th minute. Matthias Mires again uh, got us out of trouble with a goal in the 80th minute. It gives the 2-2 draw. I suppose a point's a point, but at this day I was getting pretty pissed off because there's five draws in a row. And it came up like after this game, something, you know. Because um, we'd won two or three before that, so we were like unbeaten in eight or unbeaten in nine or something like that, league games. But, you know, we'd drawn all of them, so it's hard to kind of really get excited when you're not actually winning these games. And then we were at home to Man U, and I was thinking, bloody hell, well, if considering we can. We're only kind of able to draw against these sort of teams. So there's no way we can do anything against Man U. And how wrong could I be? We turned in probably the most impressive performance um, we've done under my management. Um, possibly the, the 7-3 against Spurs was, was also up there. But we beat them 3-2. And it was this man again, Matthias Mires, with a hat-trick. 7th. Minute, 42nd minute and 47th minute. Carlos Soto, um, my golden boy at Everton, who's now at Man U because they sold him for like 15 million. Oh no, they sold him for sorry, 30 million. Um, but anyway, he, he's been banging them in. Uh, he scored two against us, including a dodgy penalty on the stroke at half time. Uh, another penalty, of course. This, this save seems to be just completely dominated by penalties but anyway we managed to um, not let that get us down and we held out for the win which was the most impressive thing considering the amount of draws we've had it was a thoroughly entertaining game seven clear cut chances to six um it was uh, like it was all over the place um five goals a penalty couldn't ask for much more especially when we came out of the game with three points the problem was we went through this patch of games, we had five games, or sorry, five days in which we had Man U at home, Liverpool away, and Arsenal at home. And then we travelled to Liverpool away two days after the Man U game, and we lost at three two. And it was another respectable performance, I have to say. Michael Urbanek and Nestor Aguirre scoring for us, uh, so two maybe not not as fancied goal scorers. You know, not not our biggest goal scorers, that's for sure. Uh, they were 2-0 up within 14 minutes, though, which kind of killed the game for ourselves. We really were fighting. We were up against it for the whole thing. We did get it back to 2-1, but then Albert Miftari scored his second of the game in the 80th minute, which kind of closed the game off. But then Nestor Aguirre kind of gave us mini hope again in the 87th minute. But unfortunately, there was just not enough time for us to get another chance and possibly sneak a draw. But a respectable performance, and I... I I enjoyed the way, like, we, we went out really fighting. We we tried to, 
We tried to get something out of the game. We just come, came up short. And you're to expect that when you're playing against a team that are finishing on average in the Champions League slash Europa League spots. And then we played at home to Arsenal. Another just three days later. So, you know, packed schedule. And we managed to win this game 1-0. So, like, going into that five-day period or something with those three games, you know, I was expecting zero out of nine in terms of points. Now, we picked up six out of nine, which I was extremely uh, impressed with. Brian Rebeo with the only goal of the game in the 64th minute, coming off a Nestor Aguirre cross. This one was actually a slightly duller game than the previous two, as the scoreline would suggest. Um, just three clear-cut chances in the whole game. Uh, I kind of went uh, went away kind of pretty quickly, which was pretty good in our case, especially after we'd scored the goal, that the game kind of just faded away. They did have chances near the end, but not enough to really um, concern us, I don't think. And we ended up coming out of the game with a, a great 1-0 win, really. Again, the Arsenal, who have been underperforming and are kind of mid-table alongside ourselves, but like just beating Arsenal is, is always going to be a, a good result. But then it was another three days after, and like at this time, uh, at this stage, you know, it was really starting to take a toll on the players after three such difficult Premier League games. And I'll take the the pain for this one because I put out a substandard team for the FA Cup third round away at um, Wigan. There was a few guys still playing. Mirez was still playing. Chan Escobar, but you can see a lot of people: Forster, Quigley, Locke, Liz. Martinez, Ciardini, uh, Max Dunn got a, got even a game, and we got, we lost three one, which was pretty poor considering they're um, they're top of the championship. But we should be beating them. But Stephen Quigley on his uh, full debut, sixteen years old, I give him a debut, and he scores an own goal, which wasn't ideal whatsoever. Which at the time, which uh, gave them the three-one advantage. Glenn Egan scored a brace for them. Matthias Mires did manage to score another one for us, and we departed the FA Cup third round at that stage. So unless we go on some crazy one and run in the Europa League and win that, we will be going another year without a trophy, which is getting on my nerves a little bit. But I'm hoping that we can push again for European spots this year. And we followed this up with a 2-2 draw at home to Aston Villa, which I thought was an excellent result considering the circumstances and considering really how we got absolutely pissed on by Villa. Uh, they absolutely dominated us from start to finish, really, and had a deserved 2-0 lead at the break. Lucas Boyer in the 16th and 43rd minute had given them a 2-0 lead, and I was really kind of... Well, I didn't know what to do, you know, I was clutching at straws, really. Matias Mirez gave us hope in the 72nd minute, but even then, I was thinking, surely it's out of bounds. But once again, Max Dunn, he hasn't scored many this year. He's been very disappointing, I have to say. But another goal right at the death. 91st minute, his sixth goal of the season, his only second in the league, which bagged us an important point against Villa. And we've got QPR away today, which is another difficult game. Because, you know, Villa are up there. They're, I think, 4th or 5th. QPR are 6th. As you can see, since the last episode, we are up into ninth now. I think we were 11th when we left you last. Because of that kind of woeful run of draws. And uh, we've still got, you know, 9 draws. It's by far the best, or the most amount in the league, by 2. And uh, we've only won 6, but we've only lost 5. So our loss record isn't too bad we've only lost five games um we've scored 38 so that's not the problem we have conceded 34 though that is the problem like it's up there with the relegation sides really like we are the we've got the worst goals against um for a team that's outside the relegation zone which is pretty poor um so we'll have to try and rectify that in some way. As you can see, QBR are in 6th here with 33 points. We're 6 points off them, so a win today could really help us in our kind of push for that top 6. Last year, I don't think... We didn't finish in 6th last year. I think 7th. No, we did. We managed to scrape 6th on goal difference. So, you know, we're looking for that top 6 position again. Um, But the, the first half of the season, we really haven't kind of set ourselves up very well. 
as you can see, Chelsea, despite only losing one game all year, which was away at Hull, where they lost 4-1 to Hull or who are in 15th, I don't really understand that one, but it somehow happened, and they've won 15, drawn 4, and yet they're only 5 points out of 2nd place Man City, who have a game in hand. That kind of show, and Man U are also 5 points adrift, but they have played the same amount of games. And then it's another six points to Villa. But it just shows you how good those top three are. And how good it was to actually beat Man U. Um, which, like, I, I still can't believe how it happened. If you have a look at the players' statistics, Eden Hazard, of course, is leading the average ratings. Alongside La La Ludgar Shad, uh, who's a great regen for Spurs. Cow, Julian Cortez and Has Hatem Ben Amor. who's a centre-back who... I bought a few years ago from uh, Madrid. He's a Tunisian international. He looks a bit of a tank, if you ask me. Um, top goal scorer is by far Matias Mirez. We'll get on to him in a second. He's got 19 league goals. Boye, one of my old favourites of Villa, has got 16. Ludgar Shad, 14. Soto, 13. And Diallo, who scored against us in the last episode, has got 12. As this wise, Cow and Rebeo both have 10. Shad is 9 to Pi. And Kieran Dowell for Sheffield United is 8, and he's a proper player. He rings the bell, yeah, he starts at Everton. Yeah, he did ring a bell. If you have a look at our individual um, player statistics, top goal scorer, which I believe is Matias Mires, with 29 goals in all competitions. And I don't really know where it's come from, because, like, you look at that, he's a pretty well-rounded player, let's be honest. Is he that good, though? Not really, but yeah, it's just kind of all clicked from this year. 29 goals and 7 assists in 24 starts and 8 off the bench. And that is pretty sensational, and also 19 in the league. Like, he has scored 9 in the Europa League, uh, but it's not like he scored like 15 in the Europa League and he's only got like 10 in the league. Because then sometimes you can say, well, you're playing against poorer opposition in the Europa League. But, well, firstly, our group stage, our group draw in the Europa League wasn't very nice because we are up against good player or good teams and secondly like he is scoring the majority of these goals in the Premier League which is a top effort. Rebeo has got 11 and also got 15 assists so fair play to him. Max Dunn as I said a bit it underwhelming this year just six goals. Aguirre has got five. Assist wise Rebeo 15. Lingard's got nine that's a good effort. Mirez seven. Reed six. Average rating wise Mirez. Mark Bowman's Doing well out on loan at MK, MK Don. I think that's in League One, it is. Uh, we won't count him though. Rebeo, Aguirre, Reed, and Lingard are at the top five, average rating wise. And I think that is all you need to catch up with. There's been nothing in the transfer window, and I suspect there won't be anything considering we've got 14k to work with. We do have 112 grand in the wage budget, so I suspect we could adjust and give ourselves a little bit of a dosh. We could get it up to Two million, but I don't really see anybody that can probably increase the squad. Maybe we'll look into somebody on loan if we're really struggling in a position or two. But at the moment, I think the the squad is starting to blend a little better. If you didn't see, we did draw uh, this crowd in the Europa League first knockout round. Petrolul, Petrolul, who are in the first, um, who are in Liga. Uh, the first league in Romania and have won it for 10 years on the trot. So it's fair to say they're dominating. Uh, what, group, what sort of group did they come through? Because they obviously finished second, I'd say. Oh god, that's no good to us. I think they finished second because they lost two games. They they beat the likes of Grasshoppers, Maccabi Haifa and Dynamo Kiev. Not as good, though, I think, as our group. And we should be able to beat them. Um, I do think that we got a pretty nasty draw for the second knockout round. I don't know. No, I don't think we can see that. Um, I've just a bad feeling about it. I think. Yeah, it was West, well. It was West Ham or Torino. Now West Ham are actually in the Championship, but they uh, uh, were runners up in the FA Cup last year, so that's why they got Europa League football and managed to get through their group. Torino, though, are a pretty handy outfit. Um, and they've got that Simone Zaza guy who's one of the best regents on the game, from my point of view. So we'll have to look out for them, but we'll have to get past Petrolol 
first. That might be in the next episode, actually. A yeah, big European night at St. Mary's. I think we're away first, so we've got a home leg. Yeah, home leg, set. Home. We're at home for the second leg. Anyway, into the game. They're about to play 4-2-3-1. I think we've changed a little bit tactically since you saw, saw us last. I think we changed to this in the middle of the whole game. To, and we managed to get a goal with... I think after we conceded, we changed to this kind of pretty attacking 4 Four four two with advanced wingers. Uh, it does leave us a little bit exposed, but it's kind of getting us goals. And as we're on control and not quite fully attacking, I think that kind of assurance us up a little bit. We've got Gustavo Allegra in goal, who's become a bit more consistent now, and has really kind of sentenced Forster to the bench. Chan, Escobar, Fosu Menz, and Wisdom. Wisdom finally back from injury, so Ciardini is back on the bench. He had a decent little run in the game, which has kind of made him a little bit more happy with me, because I gave him a run of games. Zuccolini and Freeman in the midfield. Rabeo and Aguirre on the wings, with uh, Max Dunn and Mirez up front. And we're actually going to play Reed ahead of Freeman. I think he's slightly better in that advanced playmaker role. Um, I'm trying to give Max Dunn games, because like he obviously has still something in him. He looks still a pretty good player, and also you know he, get, he keeps on grabbing these goals in the last minute, um, which kind of are encouraging me that at some stage he might start to score pretty consistently, but at the moment he's just being so o overshadowed by uh, Matthias Mirrors. I'm so glad I brought him in, because really Max Dunn's been a bit of a flop. Um, you know, imagine if we'd, uh, if we'd kind of taken the approach that we didn't need to bring in any other striker and we're, we were just to kind of rely on Max Dunn for the whole year, we'd been a a far worse position than ninth place, I can tell you that. But here's Billy Snodgrass. Oh, that's such a cheap goal if we concede. Oh, God, how many chances do they need? Get rid of it! Oh, for God's sake, they've had three clear-cut chances within that little highlight. God, the ball is bopping around the box. We look at sixes and sevens here. Billy Snodgrass hits the post, hand on the rebound. That is woeful defending, and we need a sh we need a buck up here because this has been a ridiculously poor first fourteen minutes. And Andre Han has really given them a deserved lead. We've been all over the shop. Like you can see when when that sort of a highlight happened, the the one previous to this, and also this, you know, like hits the post. Uh, Chan is completely dozing at left back. Uh, and Andre Han has got like oodles of time to uh, put that in the back of the net and we've got to be careful here so if it becomes 2-0 I don't think we're going to get this back Apple Yard, here's Captoom um, tackle him, good wisdom Zuccolini now, get rid get rid good ball, find your bow now on your bike, Max Dunn get going Max oh, Rabeau a fall, Mira oh, Mir Max Aguirre! Oh! No! Oh, how's that not gone in? How? God, talk about goal mate scrambles. They had one, we have, we've now had one. How? Because I think McCarthy has let that ball slip a few times there. Is Billy Snodgrass, get it away. Well done. Get on that second ball now. No, Snodgrass go tackle Apple Yard. We're just not winning any second balls there. Mustafa, tackle him, oh, Rivas now, Han, Rivas, no, this isn't going to end well, is it, Snodgrass, are you, Captoom, good save, was that a clear cut chance, is that going to be the highlight, or is there still something coming from this, oh, come on, Allegri, come on, you got to be better than that, Captoom, Snodgrass, Apple, you are too now. You saw that coming a mile away. You you knew immediately Allegri kicked that out straight to Apple Yard that there was a goal coming from that. It was one of those. You you can read FM sometimes like a book. Um, Snodgrass is a nice tidy ball in behind. Again, Fazio Menz is just looking at Apple Yard and Allegri just walks past the ball. It was really kind of summed up a pretty dire first half here, and we could really do with getting a goal 
to just give us a sniff. Here's Max Dunn. Oh, gets tackled far too easily. Now, do not lose that ball there. Escobar does well. Well played. Oh, my God, Allegri. There was no need for that. We've, he's gotten away with that, as Gustavo Allegri. Zuccolini, that oh, good ball. Aguirre. Oh, you've got to get a ball in there. Aguirre. He's got so he's got time. Oh, Emre Chan. What are you doing here, son? Snodgrass. Look at He's just run through a defender there. He's actually run through somebody. Oh, bloody hell. Billy Snodgrass is giving us an absolute run around here. Harrison Reed has not been actually too bad. Zuccolini not great. The two forwards have been pretty rank. So is Nestor Aguirre. So we're going to bring in Michael Urbanek on the wing. And we'll bring in Timmy Freeman in the midfield for Zuccolini. Slightly more defensive-minded midfielder, I suppose. Um... Well, no, Zuclean is quite defensive minded, but he's just not very good. <laughs> just hasn't played very well today. We we gotta just try and attack this second half, um, trying to raise these mistakes. But an early goal there could seal the game off. Oh my God! How woeful is that defending? That is shocking. Escobar, you're walking beside him. Fazu Menza decides oh, that's not for me. And then Allegri just pams it into his own net. It pains me to see something like that. And it kind of sums up our season in terms of the inconsistencies. And, like, you look at the overall match stats, we haven't actually been... Like, it's been very close... In terms of the statistics, but our us being defensively inept has really um, Snodgrass. Holy shit! How good is Billy Snodgrass? Let's have a look. He is a fairly ordinary player. Let's be honest, and he has given us a complete run around here. Oh, this is not good. This has turned into an absolute nightmare. Urbanek and Tamirez, can we snatch pride? Tim Freeman goes down far too easily. Get a penalty out of it. Brian Rabeau, only for pride now, though. And he does score at least. I thought he was going to miss it. It would, it would, it would have kind of summed up the whole game if he'd missed it. Uh, but he did manage to convert, giving us a teeny bit of resp um, of pride. But I say there hasn't been much to take away from this game. Certainly uh, nothing to take away from a positive, from a defensive point of view. Is Urban? Can we snatch ourselves more pride? Has he gone down again? <laughs> They've given us a second penalty. We are good divers, it seems. Like, we've gotten so many penalties this year. Now, like, we've we've conceded a fair few as well. Um, which is always annoying, but when you get them, it's quite funny. Rabeo, <laughs> he's gone on the other side. There's done 4-2. Could we actually? Surely not. But, well, we'll go for it anyway. We've now nothing to lose, I suppose. Um, like we're already being beaten so we might as well have a crack two penalties have given us a slight sniff in this game uh, let's have a give them a team talk push forward get up in there nah it's, it seems to have been a, a little too late the old charge They've actually looked less and less like scoring since I've tell them, told them to push forward. But anyway, we've we've lost 4-2. It's been a pretty rank performance, especially defensively. Dario Escobar with a 5.6 average rating. Um, and over, all in all, just poor. Poor, poor, poor. And it means that that gap, because QPR are still in 6, so that gap is now 7 points to 6th position. 
Or sorry, no, nine points actually, not seven points. So that is going to be a tough ask to overcome. We're going to have to go on a good run at some stage, and I don't know where it's coming from because really these games coming up aren't exactly uh, great ones. Like Sheffield United at home should be winnable. Spurs away, very tough. Swansea at home, tough enough. Chelsea away, impossible. Newcastle at home, winnable. Patrol away, I'll probably do off camera and I'll come back. For the second leg against Petrolo. No matter what the result is in the first leg. I don't know what these guys will be like. They could beat us. We could beat them comfortably. We'll have to see. Um, but we've got to try and string together a little bit of form. Like we're, There's no real excuses in this little five game period. We've no other games you know, in between. We've just got to knuckle down on the league. And try to get some little bit of form going into the final part of the season. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. I'll see you guys later. Bye.